Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explained. Now, following on from my previous test of different microcontroller boards to see which ones offer the best performance, which ones offer the best efficiency, I thought it was time to address the new breed of microcontrollers that are coming along, which is RISC-V based microcontrollers. Now, we often, I often see quite outrageous statements made about RISC-V, which I've actually made four videos here on this channel to try to to try to bust some of the myths that people talk about. And one of them is RISC-V is more efficient than anything else, just because, I, I don't know why, but that's what they say. So in this video, by comparing actual RISC-V processors with ARM processors, we're gonna see which uh, one is actually more efficient. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. Now the first thing we have to point out is that any kind of chip, no matter what instruction set it uses, the implementation of that chip, the micro architecture of that chip is going to be the deciding factor about the efficiency of it. For example, I could implement a RISC-V chip using Redstone in Minecraft. I think someone's actually done that. And there's no way, of course, that is going to be more efficient or offer greater performance than actual some kind of real piece of silicon. The same way I could kind of, you know, do it with a steam engine and valves and, you know, all kinds of things. And it does. So you understand that it's actually the design that does decides the deciding factor about the performance and about the efficiency, not the specification that says 101011101 means load this into this. You know, that's not the thing that decides the power efficiency and the performance. So what I'm doing is I'm testing different microcontroller boards, some with ARM Cortex processors on them, some with expressive systems uh, microcontrollers on them. And microcontrollers, of course, are very different to mobile processors, smartphones, laptops, very different to what you get in a desktop, very different to what you get up in the server. However, it's also the simplest to implement. You don't have to worry about memory management units, you don't have to worry about kind of, you know, interfaces to PCI Express or whatever. This is the simplest, purest form of these processors. Okay, so let's look at how I'm doing the testing and then dive into the numbers. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're going to be testing some Cortex uh, microcontroller units, the M0+, the M3, the M4. We're going to use, for example, the Raspberry Pi Pico, which has got the RP2040 processor in it, which is a dual-core M0+, uh, plus setup. And we're also going to be using some chips from Expressive. That's a Chinese fabulous chip manufacturer who make microcontroller units. We're going to be using the dual-core 10 silica extensor LX6, which is what you find in the normal ESP32. We're going to be using the ESP32 S2, which has got a single core uh, LX7, so that's the next generation in it. And the ESP32 C3 is their single core RISC V uh, processor. And all these balls cost between four uh, and seven dollars, so roughly in the same uh, price point course, depending on where you buy it, shipping costs, you know, import taxes and all that kind of stuff, your actual prices you can get them for may vary. Now, just a bit of historical context so that we understand what we're measuring here. The ARM Cortex M0 Plus was released in 2012, so that's uh, a decade ago. The ARM Cortex M4 was released in 2010, so that's uh, even, you know, 22 years, 23 years uh, ago. Uh, and the expressive, uh, particularly the RISC-V based chip that we're going to be looking at was released in 2020. So uh, there is a historical kind of battle going on here. These ARM Cortex chips have been out for a long, long time. And the question is, can the new RISC-V chips that come out just now, can they do battle with these well-established, mature and proven Cortex M0 chips? Now, a couple of other things to mention about these microcontroller boards that I'm testing and the microcontroller processors are on them. Yes, some of them are dual core and some of them are single core, and that equally applies to the ones from ARM and to the ones from Expressive Systems, as we've seen. The ESP32 is a dual core setup, whereas the uh, S2 and the C3 are single core. And from all the testing I've done, and I've actually got some dual core uh, testing that I've done and I'm going to have a video just about dual core which offers the best dual core process I've done some of that by default it looks like the other core is idle and it doesn't really affect the performance or the power consumption 
And yes, also some of them have Wi-Fi. By default, the Wi-Fi is idle. It's not connected to the Wi-Fi. It's not scanning for Wi-Fi networks. And I've checked to see whether you need to explicitly put the modem to sleep, for example. So on the ESP32 boards, there is a command to put the modem to sleep, which I did, and it didn't change the results about the performance or the power consumption. I didn't do that for the Pico because I have the Pico and the Pico W, so one with Wi-Fi and one without Wi-Fi, and we can see the difference of what it means to have that extra chip powered up on the Wi-Fi board. Of course, on the ESP ones, it's not an extra chip. It's all incorporated into the same chip. Now, how am I doing this testing? Well, I'm using a kind of an intensive CPU task. Uh, and in fact, in this time round, I'm using my Ocean 2 encryption algorithm. Uh, it doesn't use any floating point mathematics. It doesn't use integer division, but of course it does use reading and writing from memory, does use bit manipulation. And what I basically do is I take a 4K block of data and I encrypt it, and then I encrypt it again and again and again, uh, and I do this 600 times and see how long it takes. Now, the test is surprisingly repeatable with the time it takes to complete the test. It's always within one millisecond. No matter how many times I repeat it, you're going to get the same kind of answer. And what I'm doing is I'm using the Arduino 2.0 IDE with the ESP32, the STM32 and the RP2040 support packages. I'm using the same code in each uh, uh, sketch and I'm using minus 03, which is optimization level 3, whenever that is available. So here is our first graph. So along the bottom here, we have the list of all the different microcontrollers, the processor that's inside of them and their clock speed. And this here is the time taken in milliseconds to complete the actual test. So encrypting all of those 4K blocks of data. If we start over here on the right hand side, we've got the blue pill clocked at 72 megahertz. And that finishes the test in 44 and a half uh, seconds. Next along, we've got the two Raspberry Pi Pico boards. So we've got the one with Wi-Fi and the one without Wi-Fi. Very, very close. There's a few milliseconds between them in terms of their performance. Uh, clocked at 103, 133 megahertz and takes the test, takes about 37.7 seconds. The next big performance jump comes when we've got the uh, black pill with the Cortex-M4 clocked at 100 megahertz. That takes 26 seconds. And then we've got the RISC-V module, the ESP32C3, which comes in at 25.6 seconds, but that's clocked at 100. 60 megahertz. So we can see here a similarity in performance between these two uh, particular boards. But the winners are without a doubt the uh, ESP32 and the ESP32 S2 boards. This is a dual core one, this is a single core one, this is the latest generation. 18.5 seconds and some change of milliseconds difference between them. So clearly they are the fastest. So if you go from one end to the other, you've got 18 and a half seconds right up to 44.5 seconds. So clearly the processor, its clock speed, uh, and so on makes a difference in terms of the raw performance. And as I said, these two here, which really are the ones we're interested in, Cortex M4 from ARM and a uh, Risk V processor from uh, Expressive Systems, these two have very, very similar performance within 0.4 of a second. But as you saw there, there are lots of ranges of clock speeds here. So the Raspberry Pi Pico runs at 133 megahertz. Whereas those ESP2 balls, which, which were the fastest, well, they came in at 240 megahertz. So, you know, you'd expect them to be faster. The 160 megahertz uh, C3 Risk V, well, that's clocked less than its uh, its brothers, uh, but yet, uh, so it's got different performance. So that's what you expect. And the black pill and the blue pill, well, they're only down at 72 and 100 megahertz, so the lowest clock speeds here. So what we can do is we can try and level the playing field by working out what kind of performance you get if they were all running at the same clock speed. We could put 240 megahertz, we could pick 100 megahertz, or we could pick one megahertz. So I just pick one megahertz, bring it all down to that lowest common denominator, one megahertz. Let's see what kind of numbers we get. So again, the list of the boards are down at the bottom, and this is how long it took if it was running at one megahertz. So we can see third place goes to the, the ESP32 C3 board. So if they were all running at the same clock speed, that's got, that would take, and of course this is so, this is the number of uh, milliseconds, 4 million. But let's go at 4.1 uh, million is the answer there. And its brothers are actually, you can see, are less, uh, have a less uh, performance per clock cycle. It needs more clock cycles to do the same thing. 44.4 million, 4.4 million. And up here, 5 million is where we find the Cortex M0. But the winners down here are the Cortex M3 and the Cortex M4. Only 3.2 
million for the Cortis M3 and 2.6 million for the black uh, pill running at only uh, the Cortis M4 running at only 100 megahertz. So if they were all running at one megahertz, the black pill would be the fastest. You can extrapolate it the other way. You can say that if the black pill was running at the same speed as the uh, ESP 32C3, the Risk V one, then the black pill would be faster. That's what you basically the uh, kind of the conclusion is. Now, performance isn't the only issue here. We also need to look at how much power is being used. Now, it's possible to calculate the current used by the board using Ohm's law and measuring the drop, the voltage drop across a shunt. Now, things notice this is the current used by the board. And I want to underline that because some people in the comments of my last video, even though I said this, said, but you're measuring the board. And I'm like, yeah, I said that in the video because obviously much, much harder to measure the, the uh, processor on its own because you need that board, you need a way of programming it, you might need some external flash memory and so on. So yes, I am noting it is only the board, but I try my best to reduce the, the current draw on the board. For example, the LEDs are off if possible. So there's no LED being on. Boards with Wi-Fi like the Pico would use more current, though I have put the Wi-Fi in idle on the ESP32 boards. Another thing that people say, well, it must be the voltage regulator. I think there were some fanboys, to be honest, who really, really wanted the ESP32 boards to win, uh, and they couldn't accept the fact that it didn't. And so they said, oh, it must be the voltage regulator's cheap Chinese voltage regulator. When I power the boards using the 3.3 volt pins, so the voltage regulator should be bypassed, that's the way I understand it, then actually the current usage on the board is actually the same. Obviously, total energy will be used because now we're using different number of volts, but the actual current usage remains the same. So here is the graph of what current is being used. So the first one to note here is the black pill clocks at 100 megahertz and it uses the least amount of current, 20 uh, milliamps. And that, a lot of that is to do with the fact it's only clocked at 100 megahertz. There is a direct relationship, a direct correlation between frequency and the current that will be used, as well as, of course, the design of the microprocessor. Uh, we also see here that uh, the design also does have an effect because the, the Cortex uh, M3 running at 72 megahertz uses twice as much uh, 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 ampage there. So you go from 20 to 40, uh, even though this is clocked at a lower clock speed, it's actually using more power. So there's obviously other things, other facts, of course, the process node that the chips are made on, what fabrication, how many nanometers, 40 nanometers, 48 nanometers, whatever they're built on. These are all going to have uh, factors to, uh, as well. And the other thing to note here is we've got the Raspberry Pi Pico W with the Wi-Fi built into it, and that uses 32 milliamps. And that's up from the 24 milliamps used by the Raspberry Pi Pico without it. Now, of course, this design is slightly different to the ESP that we've actually got two chips. So this is a whole second chip. It's actually got a Cortex uh, M3, I think, processor inside of it. So you actually are doubling, you are powering more chips. The ESP uh, modules, they're all integrated inside the same uh, kind of physical chip. So there's a difference in the design here. And so you can, it uses more power. But the real power hogs in all of this are up here for the ESP32 S2 and the ESP32 51 milliamps, 70 milliamps. Of course, they are running at 240 megahertz, but that's a big difference between what the Pico is using, even what the uh, Risk V version is using, right up to here, 70 milliamps. So if you're going to plug in one of these, you know, get yourself hooked up to a good power station. Okay, not really, but it, they are out of this group. That is, these two obviously use the most power, but they finish faster. So you, if you want the performance, you have to pay for it. That's as simple as that. So here's the big question. If board A uses 20 milliamps, but takes 26 seconds to complete the task, but board B uses 51 milliamps, but only takes 18 seconds to complete the task, which one's better? Okay, if it's not just about performance, but also the overall efficiency, which one is more efficient? Because some of them may run quick, but use power and then they turn off quicker, but other ones may run, uh, take longer, but using lower power. So it's a tortoise and the hare kind of thing. Which one is gonna do better? Well, I've done the testing, done the numbers. Let's see what we find out. So here again, on the bottom, we have the different processors and here we have the milliwatt hours. So that's a way of measuring uh, power over time, milliwatt hours that it takes to do everything. So let's look over here, 2.4 milliwatt hours is what you get for the Blue Pill M3. So that is definitely the least efficient of the microcontroller boards that I've tested. 
Next, you get the ESP32, which is uh, 1.81 milliwatt hours. So from my last test, we saw that the uh, ESP32 is not the particularly efficient. Next, we get the Raspberry Pi W with that extra chip on it for the Wi-Fi. Then comes our Risk Five balls. So let's look at the rest from the other end. The winner is the Black Pill, 0.72 milliwatt hours. So though it's slower in real-term performance, it will get the job done in a more power-efficient way even though it takes longer than the other boards and all the other boards, in fact, by quite a margin. And then we have the Raspberry Pi Pico without the Wi-Fi on it. That comes in second place, 1.26 milliwatt hours. Close behind is the uh, ESP32 S2. So uh, that comes in at 1.3. And then uh, fourth place, you get the RISC-V uh, chip, the 1.36 milliwatt hours for the uh, ESP32 C3. So what are our conclusions? Well, the Cortex M4 based black pill has almost the same raw performance as the ESP32 C3, while only clocked at 100 megahertz. So it's clocked lower, uh, yet it offers the same performance. The Cortex M3 and M4 offer the best performance per megahertz. If the clock was running higher, then you're gonna get even better. Uh, performance and the most efficient boards are the Cortex M4 based Black Pill and the Cortex M0 Plus based Pico as they were able to complete their tasks not necessarily the quickest but without using as much uh, power as the other ones. So there is the Risk 5 boards are here they're competitive in the sense that they're not way off outside of the of what we're seeing they're in the middle but they're not yet here to compete with some of these other processors that are well established from ARM and really they do have quite a way to go. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, if you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains. And last but not least, I have a newsletter. Go to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, but you will get the newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.